Uh, joining us right now, Ann Coulter, author of Adios America and In Trump We Trust. And uh, d- d- what do you make of your president? He trusts the people in that room. He'll sign whatever they come up with. I think it was the worst day in his presidency so far, and particularly with this Michael Wolff book out. I mean, it confirms all of the worst things White House staff told Michael Wolff about about Trump, that it's, that it's all about him, he cares about his press, he's trying to distract from the book, and weirdly ends up confirming it. He seems to have no grasp of the details. He agrees with whatever the last person who speaks has said. I mean, when he agreed with DiFi on um, a standalone dreamer bill and, and the, you know, the hardcore tough on immigration guy in the room has to be Kevin McCarthy, who <laughs> used to be open borders Kevin McCarthy, um, to, to, to point out to, to the president that no, no, um, what DiFi just said was that she wants a just the dreamer bill and, yeah. and nothing else and no border security. Uh, 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 he, he, he shouldn't talk about immigration unless Stephen Miller is there to to follow up on everything he says. But I mean, if this goes through, um, sorry for you and and your kids, you have a job talking about politics, it will be irrelevant, and the the nation your children will live in is one I am glad I will not be around to see. It's funny you mentioned the Michael Wolf book, because listen, there were two uh, obvious narratives that were the, pre- the White House was trying to accomplish today. The first was, look at me, I can work with everybody and we're going to come up with something on immigration. The second was, uh, you know, I'm not mentally unstable, uh, Unstable. I'm in command of issues, I'm in command. And, and you, you mentioned that in a way that suggests suggests that um, that latter was the more overriding. It's more important to this president right now to send that message than it is to actually stand by what he ran on. Yes, but it accomplished exactly the opposite. He he well, not only was whoa not in, in grasp of, of the most basic immigration details, um, but he agreed with whatever anyone said. I mean, literally second to second, you have completely different proposals being thrown out there. You have Tom Cotton on one side and Durbin and DiFi on the other, and he he says yes to all of them. Yeah. Now here's the statement the White House put out after the closed door meeting that we didn't get to see. He said, uh, I quote part of it: uh, "They've reached an agreement to negotiate legislation that accomplishes critically needed reforms in uh, four high priority areas: border security." chain migration, visa lottery, and DACA. Does that say to you that, that there won't be a standalone DACA, but, but those four things will all be integrated in some kind of deal? Well, it's always worth pointing out when DACA comes up um, that the media has been very effective in lying about this, um, which is why one of the reasons why all of these polls are nonsense. The other reason is the poll questions are nonsense. Um, but, but do not imagine that this is going to be for, well, hardworking or not, um, 700,000 illegal immigrants brought here as children through no fault of their own, Larry. Um, (laughs) Any amnesty um, will be interpreted by immigration bureaucrats. Um, It will end up before the courts, and we've been through this before. No one in America knows about it because the media don't want you to know about it. no immigration can be limited. You could have, you could, they could write into the bill and keep writing, you know, once a month. And by the way, this applies only to redheaded nuclear scientists. And it will get before the D.C. Circuit. Oh, and by the way, the INS will instantly waive that requirement. Yeah. Um, or whatever, you know, they call the new INS. Everybody knows what the INS is. Um, and, and even if, if the immigration bureaucrats don't say, no, that's too hard to enforce. It will go before the courts, and they will say, "No, you don't need to. You don't need to meet any requirements." People who are not even in this country, have never set foot in this country, will be coming in and getting full citizenship under any amnesty. Um, so stop listening to the nonsense about oh, the hardworking, the hardworking yeah. children. But and uh, moreover, 
This is an all-new principle in law. I have never heard that we can't enforce the laws because of the effect on the criminal's children. Oh, oh I know. I, I can't, I can't, my, my favorite debating tactic on this is, you know, you don't let the kids of a bank robber keep the money that he robbed. Right. You know, this, and, and, and citizenship and the ability to work and live in this country versus El Salvador is akin to winnings from a bank robbery. And you were the earliest most passionate and and frankly uh, most effective advocate for then candidate Trump um, do you feel betrayed by by this today do you think that the president has betrayed the people who supported him and has he betrayed his own promises uh, yes yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a slow train coming. Um, I've been warning about this since he was first putting together his transition team, which consisted of um, his son-in-law, his daughter, half of Goldman Sachs. Do you know Donald Trump has more employees from Goldman Sachs than any other president? I have not heard it's that. It's unbelievable. Nobody voted for this. I mean, the big response to to Steve Bannon this week has been nobody voted for Steve Bannon. Nobody voted for Steve. I, I agree with that. I completely agree with that. They voted for Donald Trump. But I'm um, pretty sure they didn't vote for Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump either. And as Michael Wolf described in his book, um, I, I mean, Bannon wasn't one to one with me on a lot of things. I didn't like his Tea Party stuff. But um, as Michael Wolf describes in the book, the end of Bannon meant this was a family affair. Um, that was not what anybody was voting for. Incidentally, this poll um, that you will hear 100 times a day on television, because whenever anyone points out um, the, the simple facts of we have to solve um, or solve, we have to end chain migration before granting anybody amnesty, because then you have lawbreakers. Um, immediately allowed to bring in their entire extended family. Um, you, you know, present right. the actual facts to 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 the poll respondents and let's see what they say. But you know, the left and oh yeah, half the Republican Party knows that the truth is not popular here. So their answer on DACA is always, well, the polls show, the polls show. This is specifically designed to make normal people feel like they're crazy. Gosh, I'm, it must be something the matter with me because I don't, I don't want to get amnesty these dreamers. But if 83 percent agree with that, um, a <laughs> that that is not how the poll question was asked. Right. Um, um, I was just looking at some of them online. In fact, well, and, um, and, and B, the people who said one of the questions was in this, but the one that they cite the most, of course, is Fox News, because it seems to be a statement against interest. 83 percent support support amnesty for dreamers uh, that wasn't the question right um but but in that exact same poll trump supporters were asked could he say or do anything that would make you change your mind um guess what the number one answer to that was right not build the wall not keep his promises yeah there you go and and now you're afraid that's where we are well <sighs> Ann, can you can you stay with us? We gotta we gotta go check sure. on traffic. All right, Ann Coulter stays with us because we gotta talk through this, man. This is an issue. This is the Larry O'Connor Show. We continue with Ann Coulter, and coming up, we'll have Mercedes Klepp joining us. And uh, you know, a lot of us were concerned after the so-called deal on DACA that Trump made with Chuck and Nancy. Remember that? Uh, and and it turns out either that was misinterpreted or it was a head fake. We don't know what it was. Could it be that that's what's happening here? Could Trump Trump should sort of be, you know, playing both sides against the middle, and ultimately he's going to stick to his guns, and we're going to get uh, legislation that actually accommodates the promises he made in the campaign. Uh, it's possible we get the promises, but it's not because this is an intentional head fake. Uh, I mean, the Congress has tried to, um, both Republicans and Democrats. Um, that was incorrect, what I said in the previous segment about all Democrats and 50% of Republicans wanting to amnesty the entire world. It's actually 100% of Democrats and 99% of Republicans. Um, so Steve King stands alone is what you said, basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. Um, and it's been shut down three times before, not because 
a major network or, or, or politician stood up and said and opposed amnesty. It's because the American people got wind of what was happening and shut down the congressional switchboards. Um, so it's up to you, America, if you want to save your country. Um, but it is, it is disturbing and alarming um, that, that, again, that the most, that the most um, pro-American immigration sort in that meeting was Kevin McCarthy. I mean, I'm glad we brought him along. But, I, I mean, think of how these Republicans feel who have been open borders their whole lives. We beat them about the head. They finally, you know, reluctantly come aboard. And then, you know, Mr. <laughs> Mr. I'll Build a Wall is announcing he'll sign whatever you send. And, oh, yeah, number one, we got we to gotta pass the DACA. Um, I mean, the Democrats are the ones who are who are who are negotiating quite well here they're crossing their arms and saying we we don't even have the house the senator or the presidency but we insist dreamers amnesty that's it standalone bill and in exchange we will give you nothing whereas trump shows up at the meeting the great negotiator and gives them um um, he'll he'll sign anything they send. He'll sign DACA. He's already backing down on the wall. We've moved from 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 the wall to to border security. And whenever any politician starts telling us about the natural barriers and we don't actually need a wall, you know, can we leave that up to the Corps of Engineers? Plus, which is kind of an obvious point. Why are you wasting time with this word salad? The point they are trying to make is, well, it won't actually be a wall all the way across the border. You know that thing Trump promised you during the campaign, right? Um. No, he's just giving giving up point after point after point. And that's where we start the negotiation. The hardcore, I'll build a wall, the port illegals have a moratorium on immigration. The guy who won the presidency for pretty much no other reason than making those promises, he's already given it all up, and the Democrats are saying, nope, you're getting nothing, and we want dreamers. That's where the negotiation starts. <laughs> You mentioned Stephen Miller and Coulter. He wasn't there at the meeting today, but uh, he was in the media on Sunday uh, with Jake Tapper. He was on with Tucker Carlson last night. He appears to be sticking to his guns. He's he's still there. He's part of a meeting right now, probably at the White House, sort of sorting it all out. Probably committing hari kari. Is is he alone? Is he is he the last is he the last man standing in your opinion? Uh, poor poor Stephen Miller. Um, Aww. You know, it, it would be helpful. And, you know, one other thing I'll say about this Wolf book is, um, I mean, these are things people in the White House told Michael Wolf. Some of them are untrue. Some of them are obviously un untrue. But these are things that people around Trump are telling a reporter. Um, now, how did those people end up in, in the Trump White House? Oh, that's right. He hired them. Um, the idea stated, I think, by Bannon in the book that, well, if, you know, this guy had won, we have all of AEI. And if this guy had won, we would have had the Heritage Foundation. And if this guy, we'd have the whole, but, but you know, a populist agenda. There's nobody who can do that. Um, no, actually, there are plenty of people who can do that. That and and who went to better schools than the people he's actually hired, I might add. Um, he might want to think about hiring the people who supported him for the first year he was running, and not the people who opposed him. Um, but they, they should know. put you in the room negotiating with Steny Hoyer and Coulter. Would you you you, Again, you not do really it right? A job person here. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Of all the people I'm discussing, I am do not happen to be among them. Mickey Kaus, Pat Cadell. I mean, I could name dozens of them. Another interesting point Michael Wolf makes in his book, I think a very good point, um, and something I've noticed about some of these lawyers and the people in the White House, the ones brought in by Priebus, the problem with the swamp is they have to they have to deal with the swamp long after Trump is gone. Their interest is not in making Trump happy, it is making the swamp happy. And as Wolf points out, the same thing is true with the Goldman Sachs people, the Gina Powell, Gary Cohn, Ivanka Trump, uh, Jared Kushner, they're looking at life after the presidency. Longer they game. need to make the leap off. It, it is not to make Trump look good. It is to make themselves look good for the next step. And thanks for joining us. I know you how fired you up, up you were about this, and we were uh, really lucky to be able to harness it so that we can continue the conversation here. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye.